A very warm welcome to you. Many thanks for joining us on this week's edition of Almond Finance and Wealth Report. We remain your source for all the latest happenings in the world of insurance. My name is Maggie Osibo. You're welcome. Just as we promised, this week on the program, we bring you highlights of the 46th African Insurance Organization Conference and General Assembly that took place recently at the Emperor Palace Hotel, Johannesburg, South Africa. The AIO is a non-governmental organization established in 1972 with the main objective of promoting inter-African cooperation and developing a healthy insurance and reinsurance industry in Africa. The 2019 edition was organized under the theme Insurance Penetration in Africa, Insuring the Uninsured, and had over 800 delegates from more than 60 countries in attendance. As always, it was serious talk in the various sessions and a display of the rich cultural heritage of the African continent. What more can I say? Sit back, relax, and enjoy the lineup. Details in just a moment. Please stay with us. The theme of the African Insurance Organization Conference and General Assembly, AIO, is carefully chosen each year to reflect the focus of insurance practitioners on the continent. The 46th edition with the theme, Insurance Penetration in Africa, Insuring the Uninsured, was recently held at the Emperor Palace Hotel, Cape Town Park, Johannesburg, South Africa. The three days conference provided yet another platform for insurers and all the critical stakeholders on the continent to brainstorm on how to use innovation to mitigate risk to better the lives and the economies of Africans. The annual conference had over 800 delegates in attendance from more than 60 countries. Coming delegates to the conference, the immediate past president of the AIO, Ms. Arita Duku, employed insurers on the continent to invest in customer-centric business models to make access to insurance possible to low-income people. So we have packaged insurance industry in Africa. Should recognize changes affecting the market, both globally and also on the continent, make appropriate changes Prioritize investments, be extremely mindful of transformational effects of technology and regulation. At the same time, invest in customer centric business models so as to enable access absolutely easy to the underinsured and uninsured in our effort to prove this penetration. We should all be encouraged to build talents to enable revenue and continual adaptation. At this conference, experts will provoke our thoughts of a very similar topics, such as is the African economic landscape ready for insurance interest? So I will just say that the role of insurance in important education, just to mention it. A recent publication in the Strategic Journal of Business and Change Management for the study of factors. Influencing penetration rates of general insurance services in Arab Kenya by Vijaya and Zoa, who is a bit of 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 a bit
aber auch auf der Mittelstraße der Ende nicht. Denn auch so, we should make sure our show bodies are educated on good risk management practices. Declaring the conference open, Mr. Ishmael Memunat, head of the Task and Financial Sector Policy Division, National Treasury South Africa, said that treating insurance customers fairly is the sole focus of the regulators in South Africa. Do your customers understand your products? Do they have pages and pages of fine print? When something happens, you say, but it's in a fine print. That type of business is old style business. It's unacceptable today. How many people have iPads or mobile phones? Yes, no, everybody? How many of you read the fine print when you accept an app for your phone? <laughs> Can you put up your hand? Okay, exactly. Just like you don't read the fine print, don't expect your customers to read the fine print. And don't use that as an excuse not to pay out. So treating your customers fairly clearly is a critical objective in South Africa. What are what we call the market conduct issues? How do you treat your customers? How do you conduct your business? Is it possible for your customers to understand the difference between two products? Uh, it's very really impossible to understand. Uh, let's take your motor car as insured. A company will have two products related to car insurance. I promise you, it's impossible to even understand. Uh, the difference between those for most people. Can I declare this conference open and wish you many days of hard work. Uh, please be careful not to lose your money uh, doing other activities. Be here. Hopefully I know you're here to do the hard work. Thank you. With the opening formalities over, delegates settled down for serious deliberations on the theme and sub-theme papers of the conference. The first session of the conference focused on the sub-theme is the African Economic Landscape Ready for Insurance Penetration. Speaker was Mr. Ian Keck, Group Chief Executive Sanlam. In his presentation, Mr. Keck stated that insurers on the continent must work with their regulators to deepen penetration. We must work with our regulators. Regulatory equality is really, really important for the development of the industry. And people tell me about overregulation. I say, yes, I understand it, but you try and work in an environment where you've got no regulation. That's, trust me, friends, that is much worse. And policies that encourage savings really do help. Policies like we've had in India that encourage insurance, even more than savings, like on the trains and in the agricultural area, there are lots of examples where government policies and things that got people involved in the insurance industry, the micro policies that we provide for insurance regulations, we've got these things all help. And the insurance industry needs to play the role. That's really the message that. But we've been able to demonstrate that we can develop products and solutions and deliver those to clients where clients see value. When we hope in 100% of the cases, of course it's not the case. But generally, we've delivered on the market opportunity. The second session of the conference panel discussion focused on understanding South African insurance penetration. Panelists were Mr. Victor Muguto, Partner and Director of PricewaterhouseCoopers. Mr. Terence Williams, CEO Aon South Africa. Mr. Bell Hazan Tonat, General Manager, Non Life Munich Re Africa. And Ms. Priya Neka, Head Strategic Retail Marketing, Old Mutual Limited. Sharing his thoughts during the panel discussion, Mr. Mugutu said that despite the high insurance penetration levels in South Africa, insurers still need to understand the demographic of people to know the type of products they want. People insurance is just one aspect of insurance. 
um, there are a whole lot of other things that we need to think about. And I think what we need to do is start understanding the demographics of people um, in talk about the demographic building. That's significant. We're going to miss it if we don't use the tools that we now have in tech to understand the needs of those people, the young people that have never been insured, rural communities that have never been in front of insurance, um, and others that don't trust the insurance environment. So we need to start at the ground to really start understanding what the needs of those people are. And then as the audience says, it's not about products that we design and bring to those who can afford to what it's about what the people want, what is relevant. And then in the end, ultimately achieving that media where an insurer can manage the risk and claims down and ensure that the policy owners can walk away with favorable outcomes. So 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 moving beyond the control and into the wider space. I think for regulators, for practitioners, insurance carriers, and policy owners, technology is all empowering. It's now creating this medium or universe where we can see through customer needs, customer behaviors, um, and, and design things in a proactive manner um, that are relevant. Um, and also manage risks in a relevant manner. So I suppose from a regular perspective, that, that's, that's a, a desire that risk management that becomes a, a, a much more advanced. From a policy order perspective or customer perspective, I think it's empowering in the sense that customers are more able to see what insurers do and choose for themselves and they are hopefully somewhere along the line there's enough flexibility to achieve that every medium between the customer and the insurer. The third session presentation of the conference focused on the role of insurance in poverty alleviation. Presenter was Mr. Gustav Agaston, founder and CEO of BIMA. The fourth session focused on surviving floods and drought. Presenter was Ms. Dolika Banda, CEO, Africa Risk Capacity Insurance Company Limited. For insurers on the continent to increase access to insurance products and services to the largely rural poor, they must have the buy-in of government through regulations. The fifth panel discussion of the 46th AIO conference looked at the role and impact of regulation in driving inclusivity. Discussants were Mr. Isofa Nashri, Secretary General, Chartered Institute of Management Accountant, Sima Gabon. Alaji Mohamed Kari, Commissioner for Insurance Nigeria. Mr. Brandon Topham, Financial Sector Conduct Authority, South Africa. Mr. Hazan Bobik, Chairman, Supervisory Authority of Insurance and Social Welfare, Morocco, and Alaji Kadanuba Ibrahim Lubenga, Chief Executive Officer, Insurance Regulatory Authority, Uganda. Sharing his thoughts during the panel discussion, Alaji Kari said that for insurance sector to make an inroad in financial inclusion, they must increase and improve their distribution channels to reach the target people with their products and services, especially in the rural areas. The financial inclusion strategy uh, designed some approach to each regulator on how they can break this uh, barriers. For the insurance industry, we identify that uh, we need to create innovative products. We need to spread the coverage of our insurance services. We need to improve on the distribution channels that can reach those financial needs through the and we need to redefine the product size. This is the assumption of the premium perspective from that. Um, the major approach we took in uh, analyzing the first and foremost is to improve on financial literacy, which is handled jointly by all the financial regulators under the financial inclusion strategy. Um, then we also identified the need to review our regulatory framework so that it can accommodate the low income and the professional education framework is very strict. Uh, so, which is strict. Uh, overall product is very strict. Uh, we realized that uh, to be able to attract that financial needs to the consumer, you have to make it as easy to get, to get services, especially in terms of the time. 
So we, first of all, start with the test of items. We license conventional to sell those products, those micro products, for some time. And after some time, we thought we should now change the model to make micro insurance products be sold specifically by specialist micro insurance companies. So we created different micro insurance licenses to encourage those micro insurance products to be targeted to the niche markets and to the goods that they need. So when you talk about uh, insurance regulation and compare the West African countries from the world jurisdictions, uh, you'll find that it's no one which always explains the law and the of the insurance material. Whereas other jurisdictions consider pension and health insurance as part of the insurance administration. In Nigeria we consider only now, Day three of the AIO conference started with a consultative forum on microinsurance for regulation for concerned supervisory and industry practitioners organized by the AIO in collaboration with Access to Insurance Initiative. Declaring the forum open, the current president of the AIO, Mrs. Delphine Madrid, noted that despite the increased impact of climate change on the continent, most national catastrophes in Africa remain uninsured. As you know, 14% of the population of the world lives in Sub-Saharan Africa. That same population only contributes 2% of the global carbon emission in the world. Yet, our population remains the most vulnerable to climate change. Despite all this, only 3% of climate financing makes its way to Africa. Most national catastrophes remain uninsured, and the only way to protect our population is through preparedness, risk management, and insurance. But this comes at the cost. So I'm hoping after your discussions in the next two days, you are able to come together with concrete action points towards finding and reinforcing resilience on our continent. But more importantly, we attend many conferences like this, we attend many discussions like this, but what are you doing personally on a day to day basis to support financial inclusivity, especially when it comes to climate change? I would like to now declare the session open. Thank you. Given the caliber of speakers and discussants at the various sessions of the conference this year, delegates had questions. They can sensitize insurers to really to step into life insurance because as we also saw this morning, uh, we need to are at least certain people who have the highest vulnerability and, and exposure to risks. And your initiatives are indeed helping. Now, um, uh, you sketched how there is separate license for microchips or operations, which are more favorable obviously than general operations. I would like to get a bit of a better insight on the characteristics, how you define microchips products, because that, and I'm particularly looking at the commissioners of the SEMA region and in Nigeria, I think some of the, the resistance or hesitance for insurance companies to step in is how is the microchips going to find beyond the premium and uh, next to that also uh, what is the uh, regulator doing in order to also make sure that microchips is developing favorably and, and protect consumers. Uh, to give one free example, the regulator in the Philippines uh, demands for any microchips products and claims are selling in seven days because people with scary sources a lot of the ability uh, to wait for a long time for that, and so that was one of the mandates to help to provide both client value and also to protect consumers um, uh, that are uh, of the local communities. Thank you very much. My conscience is is conscious, of course. Um, but in the my conscious regulation, we have um, put some specific aspect. Uh, we set up the my conscious is normally uh, a insurance product which is designed for low and low income um, public. This is the, the, the first part of the solution. 
We also say that um, the premium of this kind of product must be a very low and must be affordable. This is the, 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 second, the second part of the definition. And the third part of the definition, we say that mostly those kind of uh, product must be um, commercialized for uh, the group, the group in, in order to be able to, um, uh, to reach the scale uh, quick, 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 quickly. Uh, so uh, those are the main points that are in the, in, the, in the definition. But after that, we have a circular saying that uh, uh, the amount of the medical insurance product must not be more than, uh, I would say, uh, five, 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 five dollars. Um, and this circular seems to, to hinder uh, the, uh, the development of the market. And some, some company has said that normally uh, we should not uh, fix uh, a minimum uh, amount for, for, for the problem. And we are discussing with the market in order to, to be able to, to change this, this, this aspect. But the main aspect in the, the law is that uh, the, the problem must be affordable. The question is, must, must, must the, re, the regulator uh, um, give a minimum amount uh, or a maximum amount of a problem or, or not? This is the, the, the question we must the final cutting call of the 46th AIO Conference and General Assembly was a superlative closing dinner and investiture of Mrs. Mido as the president of the AIO for the next one year. By every standard, the 46th AIO Conference and General Assembly in Johannesburg was a huge success. The stage is now set for the 47th edition which will be hosted in Africa's most populous nation, Nigeria, in 2020. <laughs> Alright, that is our time on the program this week. Many thanks for being a part of it. Do join us again next week, same time, same station, for a fresh package. In the meantime, feel free, as always, to connect with us on all our social media platforms. And if you missed any part of today's episode, not to worry, you can catch it again on our YouTube channel, Armon Finance TV. Once again, my name is Maggie Osibo. Thanks for joining us this week. Until we come away again next week with a fresh package, from the entire crew, it's goodbye. <music>